Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about whether clean code is actually dead because a few days ago I saw this post on Reddit and I wanted to talk about it for the longest time because even before I saw this post I wanted to talk about this subject. You see, we had the whole concept of clean code for the longest time made popular by the books from Uncle Bob, clean code, clean coder, clean architecture, clean your clothes, I don't know, whatever. And I feel like those books and those concepts, even though they peaked around, I don't know, seven to eight years ago, I think they are on the decline. And I wanna go through this post today because it talks about the frustration of one developer trying to find employment in a company that uses them and just can't. So in this video we're going to discuss that and I'm going to give you my take as someone who has practiced this in a massive company and give you my observations. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so let's take a look at the post. So is clean code dead? And by the way, this is about C Shop, but I think the sentiment is universal. It's not about C Shop specifically. So I'm in software development for about 20 years already and about 10 to 12 years ago I got hooked on clean code and TDD. I think that's when it was the most popular, especially with those books and people just shoving them down everybody's throats. And by the way, I was one of those junior developers at the time who got those books shoved down my throat and I had to read them because my managers expected me to write code in that way. Now, did I become a better developer because I could write clean code, whatever that is? Maybe, but at the time, sort of everyone was writing code in that way, and if you wrote code in any other way, you were frowned upon in a way. Since then, I have a few projects where I was fully in charge of development, so the manager or the dev lead, basically, and which were 100% TDD driven and embracing solid principles, as well as strictly following OOP or object oriented programming design principles. I should point out, I'm not really a fan nowadays of OOP, I think it is overused and overrated. I like using some elements of OOP, but since I'm writing C Sharp and Kotlin, by the way, but mostly C Sharp, I am using some concepts, but I'm treating C Sharp as a general language and I'm adding a lot of functional elements into my code. That's the way I like to write C Sharp. I believe that my code ends up being better compared to what it would look if I just strictly use OOP. That's, for example, why I don't use things very much like inheritance. So those were great projects and a pleasure to work on. I know it's fair to assume that I'm saying this because I was in charge of the projects. However, I make this conclusion based on these factors. Now, even if that person tries to explain things objectively, keep in mind this will be subjective and it's going to be an isolated case. It's not enough of a sample to make a general decision out of anything. But let's take a look. So stakeholders were very satisfied with performance, which is rare in my experience. Yes, yeah, stakeholders really don't care about performance unless performance really impacts the product. In my case, for example, I had a lot of experience in e-commerce and in payments. In payments, if you are slow, your success rate will get lower in terms of payments, and this can basically kill the entire product. And then e-commerce, if the customer clicks a button and the page to buy that dress or that t-shirt doesn't immediately show up, or if things do not happen on client side first, immediately before they happen on server side, then you can lose customers. So I can understand why stakeholders can be satisfied with performance if performance is crucial in what you're doing. With time, delivery speed was dropping drastically. I have mixed feelings about this because I've been in both camps. And by the way, for the record, I've worked on an entirely TDD driven environment for six months. And it was great working on an extremely like focused TDD environment for that period of time. But once you bring developers in on product people in or stakeholders in that they're not into that concept, that can all fall apart very, very quickly because they value speed of development over correctness on the nitty gritty level, which is something that TDD will give you, which is why we actually developed with a TDD acceptance test driven development, which is a whole different concept. Maybe if you want to see a video on that, leave a comment down below and I'll make that. Now, new developers joining those projects were able to onboard and start producing value starting day one. I kind of call bullshit on that. And the reason why I say that is unless you have a very small company, which later we'll see, it's not a small company. There is so, so, so much bureaucracy going on that you just can't produce value day one. Like we had an extremely optimized onboarding for my previous company for every new developer. And even then it would be two to three or four days before that first uh, commit. And I know that some developers have optimized this. 
But once you bring terms of security, VPNs, access you have to request, like GitHub repo split in so many different places, it can just get mayhem. Uh, let's just assume that it's true. I need to admit, for many developers, TDD was a big challenge, which I think it is. TDD is not necessarily the easiest concept to grasp, but it's one of those things that once it clicks and once the first cycle closes, it's easier to go on the next and the next and the next one. And tooling is also very heavily dependent on that. That's why tools like continuous testing on JetBrains Rider or the enterprise feature in Visual Studio, as well as NCrunch, which was this incredibly popular, at least at the time, uh, extension for Visual Studio that would just run all your tests every time you saved or changed something. Those had their peak around seven to eight years ago. They were basically everywhere. And the best developers in any company I worked in they were using those tools. So in fact, most of these developers really appreciated working in such an environment, but almost none of them kept following the same practices after leaving. And I'm kind of the same, to be honest. Yeah, in an environment where you use solid, clean code, TDD, OOP practices, if everyone is doing that, you sort of have a Boy Scout rule where you will also follow the same thing and leave the place better than you find it. But it's not really an easy thing to do unless everyone is on board. And unless your manager or your dev lead has that mindset, it is just really hard to have everyone coordinate on. And many times we've tried it in companies I've worked at. And the truth is companies don't really pay you to write clean code, solid TDD or OOP. It's not about you. It's not about your fun and about your satisfaction writing the code. It is about delivering the product and delivering a functional product that works and it's performant enough. And that's enough. If it takes twice as long to make something that's 10% faster than what it would have been, nobody cares in terms of product. So you have to understand that it's not about you, it's about them in many ways. And you're just a cog in this machine. And by the way, I'm saying all that, being fully aware that I'm running a platform where one of our courses is all about writing clean code in C Sharp and it's a very popular course. Also, test-driven development. Another thing is here as well, extremely popular course as well. And then you have Solid Principles, another very, very, very popular course. We're going to put a link in the description down below if you're interested. So people are using and they are learning them, but they're doing it both because they need to know how to adapt them to each company, but also because many interviews require them as a way to get in the company. The funny thing is, from what I've seen, once you get in the company, those practices are not necessarily followed in the same way that you would interview for Microsoft or Google or Facebook and you'd be asked to reverse a linked list or traverse a binary tree and then you join these companies and you never write any code like that. It's a very weird situation, this one. If you had a similar experience, please leave a comment down below and let me know. So why am I complaining here? Well, as I mentioned, it was a few, but for the last already years, I'm stagnating to find a job in a company where clean code, solid TDD and OOP practices mean something. And by the way, that's fine. There's very, very massive companies that use JavaScript, PHP, Visual Basic, F Sharp, one at least must be using half a company probably. So you have to understand that it is not about the technology and the way to write technology. It is about how that technology makes the product and can it make the product. The rest is just implementation details that honestly many people don't even care about. I've worked for some massive companies. My last employer at their peak were the ninth most valuable company in the world, privately held at 44 billion valuation. And you would see some stuff that, yeah, it was questionable at best, like really, really, really bad code. But it worked fine and nobody was complaining. Oh, okay, some people were complaining it, but it was mostly developers. Product never said this thing could be 50 milliseconds faster. Let's go and update it. It just doesn't make any sense from a product perspective unless performance is part of the product design, in which case it does. Now, don't get me wrong, most of the companies require such knowledge because, yeah, you should know how to do all of those things individually because you can get individual elements from them and use them in the way you write code. Even if we don't call that clean code, solid or TDD, you can still use the same concepts and produce something good but you don't follow the exact same flow. In fact, I've seen many developers, including myself, that once you learn how to practice TDD, you can actually write code that is testable by default. You don't have to do TDD. You're going to end up usually 
in the exact same landing zone. Yes, yeah, sometimes you might over implement a beta feature because you did not use TDD, which allows you to only develop exactly what you need. But if you're 50% faster doing it that way, who cares? Nobody cares. And, no, and you shouldn't care either. Don't get too passionate. Don't get too attached on your code. You are not your code. Now they're asking for it in interviews. Yeah, very, very common. I mentioned that before, telling stories about how important it is within a company. Usually it's bullshit. And this is a very important subject during the technical interviews. And I had many tough interviews with great questions and interesting, valuable debates on these matters. I found that developers tend to like to debate on these topics just to debate. Naming, solid, like, does this need an interface? Should it be an abstract class? Those things, like, they can get so pedantic and so narrowed down to, like, pointless discussions that just burn money and burn time. In most cases, you really, really, really don't need to spend an hour naming this field. Trust me, it's fine. And then, however, once you join this company, it all vanishes my story of my life. There's no more clean code, no TDD, no solid, no OOP, and so on. So am I just extremely unlucky or are those just sales buzzwords? I'm going to tell you they're just sales buzzwords. Even if you work for massive companies, even fan companies, it's very unlikely you're going to find all of these concepts implemented. Now, I want to take a look at the comments real quick. So in my career, 20 years, I've never seen anyone actually follow TDD or clean code. And this includes large enterprises, but also small startups and smaller orgs. Startups specifically and small companies really don't care about you following all the best principles. They just want to take the product out, have an MVP, ship it, raise their capital, hire more people and fix the mess later because that's not really going to lose them as much money as not releasing a product and potentially not raising the money. That does not mean that there are no companies that you can get a job in which they practice TDD, clean code and so on. But if it's a big company, it's usually up to the individual team to choose how they're going to build the software because each team works in sort of an isolated environment. Another comment is, I believe principles and methods have become more the goal in itself than a guideline that helps the developer. I totally agree. I so, so agree with this. You need to know the why and most companies I feel are not concerned because the people making the decision had it worked elsewhere. Take, for example, Scrum. God, I have to make a video on Agile at some point in Scrum. Like, there is no bigger trap than Scrum and Agile 70 years ago. It's why everyone hates it now. It's such a stupid way of building software for 95% of everyone using it. Some people are just using it just to use it. I'm gonna have to calm down. Scrum is fine. I don't have to use it anymore. But God, is it an awful way to build products. So there are a lot of companies that say they work with Scrum, but in reality, they just pick and choose things for Scrum methodology and they think it works for them, but that's not how Scrum works. I should point out, by the way, that Scrum in theory works and if everything is in sync, then it's fine. But it's the way that people do Scrum nowadays that kind of sucks. It's sort of waterfall development with hard deadlines and then meetings every two weeks. That's basically it. And we waste an hour in the morning grabbing a coffee around the table and saying, yeah, yesterday I worked on this feature, today I'm going to work on this feature. Like, what is this? And then there's a bunch of other comments. I'm going to put a link in the description down below in case you want to read them. It is a great post. It's a great topic. Now, is clean code really dead? In my opinion, it is not. There's always going to be companies using it. But if I want to change the question, would I force my development team to use clean code? Well, I would want them to write good code using good development practices, but those are aspects of each individual thing. For example, I'm going to take aspects of TDD and how to write testable code. I'm going to take aspects of solid principles, maybe single possibility, open, close, and a few other things. And maybe I will take aspects of clean code around naming and so on. But will I use everything of everything by the book? No, I wouldn't. I usually have a pragmatic approach in building software and I just take something from everything I read and I try to see how it synergizes and it works for my use case. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this topic? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And if we have any Scrum haters out there, please leave a comment down below as well. I really want to know that you exist. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.